you can easily outperform the measly interest paid by the banks. The way you do this, you can save money in a permanent, overfunded whole life insurance product and coordinate those savings with all of your money making decisions. You can use your own money instead of the bank's money. And you can set up a loan scenario where you're in control of your payback periods and you can use your cash. Cashflow banking is a banking alternative that actually pays interest. It's a structure to save you on insurance costs. For example, people are paying for term life insurance and only 1.1% of that ever pays out. So if they don't die, money's gone. Long-term care, people paying for these policies and then if they have two activities they can't perform with daily living, they can go into a facility and there's an insurance cost to that. And you know what? There's other things like there's ways you can save taxes without locking your money away for years like retirement plans. There's other benefits from cutting out the bank and doing exactly what they do with their reserves. You can easily outperform the measly interest paid by the banks. The way you do this, you can save money in a permanent, overfunded whole life insurance product and coordinate those savings with all of your money making decisions. You can use your own money instead of the bank's money. And you can set up a loan scenario where you're in control of your payback periods and you can use your cash. What is a family bank? Let's start okay, the so very what would the Rockefellers do um, is looking at what banks have been doing with their reserves for a long time. There's something called bank owned life insurance. And so they take their reserves and they put a percentage of those reserves into cash value insurance plans but these are high cash, low commission types of plans, and they do it with their executives. And that way they're earning interest without paying tax on that while well, it's inside of that plan. It's higher interest rate than what they're getting in their savings accounts through dividends. And so the concept here is how can you create a minimum guaranteed interest rate? How can you have access to your money before 59 and a half with zero penalty? As a matter of fact, get access to that money very quickly, right? Yeah. How can you add a multitude of benefits that if you became disabled, the payments would still happen into this cash plan without you making that payment after six months. Or if you needed to go to a long-term care facility in your later ages, that you could tap into the death benefit while you're alive, not just after you're dead. And ultimately, the goal for me is how do we help you build more cash flow and buy your net worth? That's why I call it cash flow banking, because we're looking at you could start financing things yourself and, and paying interest. You could pay for uh, you know kids' education, um, instead of going to get a student loan, you could, you know, finance their, their mortgage and you get paid the interest rather than a bank. And so it starts to be ways that you can operate and act like a bank and you're not, you know, you're not subject to, oh, well, right now lending is, is really restrictive because it's a recession yeah. or, you know, having access to your money versus having it all tied up in plans that have a whole bunch of fees and, and have a ton of, I don't know, just make it onerous to get access to. Dell Clark, the human ATM, is going to teach you about cash flow banking. This has been my just my framework that I unintentionally started to a certain degree at age 19, and it has never failed me. It's been the way that I've capitalized buying a company, putting in a TV studio, paying off high interest rate loans, funding my first New York Times bestseller, and then it's a place that I can go store it again that I've earned around 5% without having to pay tax. So it's outperforming my savings account because it's the same thing the banks do when you put money in theirs. They take a percentage and then they just put it in the same place. Why not cut out the middle, man, so that you can get those returns and that you can have that safety? So Dell, tell us how we do it. So cash flow banking is just a more elegant, simple system to help you not only capture wealth, but also you know, create wealth. Mm -hmm. And so you, so know, you get a wealth capture account, which is a savings account. Right. Pay yourself first into that. That starts to build up. But instead of leaving that taxable and exposed, right. we're just going to have it automatically move to another account. You have the opportunity to put that in a different account. And the account makes four to 800% higher rate of return than you might be getting in a savings account. I was 19 years old or 18 years old, and I just started putting away 50 bucks a month. And I started paying $262 per month away, right? Mm -hmm. And then I just kept doing more and more as I increased my income. So it began with me. Then when I got married, we got, you know, policy on on Carrie, my wife, mm -hmm. and then now we have policies on the kids. And, you know, I, I sat down with my parents. It took me a long time to convince my mom on the whole concept of what we're doing, but now she's bought into it. So a lot of it has to do with education and conversation, but leading by example is by far the biggest way in progress over perfection. It doesn't matter how much you put away, mm -hmm. it just matters that you're doing something. You just begin by paying yourself first. Go create a wealth capture account. It could be a checking, savings, money market. It's just safe, it's liquid, it's available. It begins by being more efficient and taking the savings to set money aside. So I call this automatically save your money 
Then once it's automatically saved and you built it up, you can choose to deliberately invest. So the objective is to find 15% of your income that's being lost because you overpay on tax or overpay on interest or maybe investment fees that don't support performance or maybe insurance costs that come from duplicate coverages. The key is to build this peace of mind fund, create a habit of automatically saving and eventually have that money transferred to your own banking system. It's simple just to start with, get a overfunded cash value plan mm -hmm. and you can have the owner be whoever you want. It could be me or it could be my trust, right? Yeah. The beneficiary could be my trust and everything that we want to do there so that there's benefit to the kids and began with insuring myself. So then you can expand that. And so we've got people that have bought policies on their parents and that's that's kind of like one way to do it, but not the only way to do it. And if you never did that, you could still just get it on yourself. If you don't have the health, you could get it on a spouse or on kids, right? So there's a lot of ways to implement it. We want to turn this wealth capture, which is normally a savings account that's not earning a lot, that you help fund by saving on tax, and you can watch other videos I do on those areas. But once you find that money, let's move it from a 1% to 2% taxable and double or maybe quadruple what you're getting inside of cash value. So you take the money that's going to the wealth capture account and automatically have it moved or transferred to what's called an overfunded, cash flow insurance policy. There's a lot of crappy insurance policies out of there. It takes years before you start seeing your cash. They're high commission and they're low cash. You gotta get, eliminate those. You gotta find the certified specialist. See, because once you get the policy designed right and you've got money in your control, you can now invest in the right opportunities when they come up. You know, setting up the uh, specifically type, you know, a specific type of life insurance that banks use, that institutions use, called overfunded whole life insurance allows you to boost your returns by 400, 800%. It allows you to have asset protection on that money. It allows you to have flexibility so that you can contribute more or less depending on you know, certain situations that you're in. This is how it's designed to Correct. make it work this that is how way. it's designed. And you can access that money Correct. before 59 and a half. There's no penalty. You can. There's multiple ways to access that money. Correct, so there's a couple different strategies to access the money, one of which is uh, you know, the flat out withdrawal. And it's not a strategy that we typically recommend, but you know, if you ever wanted to go and take money out of a policy and never put it back in, you could withdraw the money. The downside to it is it could be a taxable event. Yeah. Any money goes in, going into it above the basis becomes taxable. Yeah. And you can't put the money back in with a withdrawal. Look, I actually so. wrote a book on this, and if you just you're gonna want to just click where the arrow is and grab this book for free. Now you'll pay the shipping and handling, but it's minimal, like very minuscule amount, but I'll cover the cost of the book so that if you want to dive into this, we're going to talk about it here, but if you want more information on it, because this is going to be maybe 10 or so minutes on it, that will give you kind of like your own pacing. Right. So the other way to access the cash in the account is through taking out a policy loan. And when you take out a loan, you're not actually, take, you're not actually borrowing your own money, you're borrowing money from the insurance company. And, and your money is collateralized. And your money and your money is collateralized. You know, collateralized. So it doesn't in that matter loan. your credit score. It just matters how much cash is in the policy. You don't have to go through a loan application. There's no credit check. No payback period. That's firm that you have to do either. Correct. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So and the and the money that when you take out a loan, there's no taxes on the loan. There's no penalties. Now there are situations where it could be taxable on the loan. Uh, if you step above a guideline called the modified endowment contract, where so you're overfunding. you just overfunding. put so much overfunding beyond what the government really wants you to be. And people to used do. to do that back in the 80s and 90s where they and just. And it didn't matter back then. Yeah. It, they, I mean, they could put in a million bucks and have it grow all tax deferred and really loaning it out tax free. And the rules changed a little bit because That's it was right. a bit abusive. Right. So, so, so we're talking about instead of having money in a savings account, cut out the middleman of the bank, put where they put some of their reserves, which is this overfunded higher cash value life insurance that once it earns interest, it's locked in, has a minimum guaranteed. It has, depending on the state you're in, 100% liability protection or partial liability protection in bankruptcy or lawsuit. And it's available or accessible either because you just take a withdrawal or you get a loan and that you could always pay that back on your own terms or if you die, the death benefit will tax-free pay it back. Let me be clear about this. Uh, cash flow banking is not the name of the life insurance policy. Uh, it's a, it's, it's a whole system. It's yeah. the whole system and so the system includes finding and fixing your money leaks, understanding your money personality, setting up your proper account structure, having li living wealthy and wealth capture account. So it's the whole system that allows you to be more elegant and you know have more control over your finances. The vehicle that we use in this particular strategy is called a you know whole life insurance. Right. And there's right. a lot of you know negative information about whole life and I think a lot of it's merited right. because it's either not designed well, it's high commission the way it is, it takes forever to get cash, it's with the wrong companies. 
or just a lot of people not understanding what's going on because there's something mm -hmm. called price, cost, and value. Price is what we pay, it's the price tag. Cost is the economic impact. So something can have a high price and a low cost. Like the right accountant is the best example. They might save you way more tax even though you pay twice as much than another accountant, but it saves you 10 times more in tax. And then value is our overall fulfillment, joy, perspective, you know, that we personally get from it. So when I think about it, yes, whole life is gonna have a higher price tag than term insurance, but we're not looking at something that's just gonna be temporary and go away. We're looking at something that's gonna be permanent and it creates a funding structure for cash value. Correct, right. See, permanent insurance gives you accelerated, accelerated benefit riders. What does that mean? It means that if you qualify for long-term care, they'll let you spend part of the death benefit while you're alive. You can even have your interest compounding inside of there when you access your money through the loan provisions because they use your money as collateral, let it earn interest, and give you their money at interest. So you're not interrupting that compound interest curve. That could be a massive thing long-term. So if you wanna find out how to set this up properly, and if you can actually do this for yourself, you go to cashflowbanking.com, there's certified specialists there, and you can set up an appointment. There's also some cool resources to look at. With cash flow banking, you have tax benefits, which are called FIFO, first in, first out. The first dollars you put in, you get to take back out tax-free first. They give you your interest last. Not many things do that. It's tax deferred, and when you go to take it out, you can borrow that money to avoid tax, or if you take withdrawals, you get your first dollars back tax-free, and if there's an outstanding loan when you die, it's subtracted from the death benefit and remains income tax-free. So that's a myriad of tax benefits. The next piece is there's provisions on cash flow banking and cash flow insurance called waiver premium. If you're disabled longer than six months, they keep making the deposits for you. The accelerated benefit where it allows you for long-term care, you can tap into that. That means you might eliminate those other costs and boost your returns. The cash value is protected in over 40 states from lawsuits and bankruptcy completely. And in all states, partially and one of the hacks is just sign in a state that's fully protected and go there when you get your policy you don't have to pay for term insurance because you now have a permanent death benefit policy that will be around one day longer than you which means you have tax-free money coming in i call that buying your net worth rather than trying to build it if you utilize cash flow banking and you get everything properly set up you'll be able to pay for your kids college or pay off loans and debt see remember to consider the risks and only invest in things you know. When you're investing in things that are highly speculative and volatile, you know, that may or may not work out. This has a lot more stability. Yeah, I find companies that are over 100 years old. I prefer mutual companies, meaning they're not, they're not traded on the public stock exchange, so they're not mm -hmm. spreading dividends amongst policyholders and stockholders and not having to make really short-term decisions. I want to see a minimum guaranteed interest rate of somewhere around 4%. Um, I want to see multi, multi, multi billion dollar companies. I want to see all rate A ratings. I want to see where I can put flexible amounts of money above the minimum. That's the overfunding that can help fuel the cash to be, you know, over. It, it doesn't pay as much commission, so it might not be as enticing to some of the agents that are selling it. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be a great situation for the individual because what we're trying to do is mimic how is bank owned life insurance work. How does how would the Rockefellers have designed it? You know, they didn't have to go and pay commission. They just get privately built, there's another thing called private placement life insurance, mm -hmm. but usually you got to have a million dollars a year that you're putting in for private placement. Yeah, that's and that a lot means of cash. not a lot of people, <laughs> right? you know, are going to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to mimic what's the closest thing we can do with something that's available to pretty much everybody. And it's just in the design. So I've given a little bit of the criteria. The overfunding is what's called PUA, paid up additions that you're putting more cash in. It's available as soon as it's in there. You can borrow it, which means that they use your money as collateral and give you their money and then you still earn interest, right? But you yes. have to pay interest to get access to that cash. Or you could take a withdrawal. I usually borrow because I want to pay it back. Yeah. And if I don't pay that loan back, it just gets subtracted from the death benefit and the rest comes back into the family bank, into the family estate plan.